In the light of Hadith 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 Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله In the light of hadith is our program In this beautiful program we explain some beautiful ahadith of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And today, our hadith is very famous hadith. Narrated by Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam buni al-islamu ala khamsin shahadati an la ilaha illa allah وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ وَالْحَجِّ وَصَوْمِ رَمَضَانِ Narrated by Ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنهما The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم stated Islam is based on five principles The first one to testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Second, iqamatu salah, to perform the salah, to perform the prayers. Third, to pay zakah. Fourth, to perform hajj. And fifth, to observe song during the month of Ramadan. In this beautiful hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam described Islam as a building. As a building is based on some pillars and foundations, by the same token, Islam is based on some pillars. And those pillars are the essentials of Islam, the basic worships of Islam. What are those? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi explained very beautifully and mentioned particularly what are those. Testimony, the oneness of Allah and the messengership of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then establishing prayer, then paying zakah, performing hajj, observing fast in the month of Ramadan. These are five pillars of Islam. And as a Muslim, we know very well, these are the pillars of Islam. When we say pillars of Islam, foundations of Islam, so we mention these five things. Five are the pillars and foundations of Islam. Believing in these five things is first, that is obligate. And rejecting any of them is disbelief. If someone doesn't believe in the obligation of prayer or hajj or zakah or fasting, so he is not Muslim, he is out of the fold of Islam. Offering prayers, five times prayers daily is obligatory, is first. Then paying zakah with its conditions, paying zakah is first once a year. Then performing hajj once in life for the person who has means to reach the Holy Kaaba and to perform hajj. And observing fast during the month of Ramadan. These are pillars of Islam and, these are, and that is a little detail of these obligations. There are many ayat in the Holy Quran, there are many ahadith regarding the obligation of these pillars and these worships. As about prayer and zakah, there are in many places, uh, I think in uh, 32 places in the Holy Quran, Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned prayer along with zakah. As in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Azza wa Jal has stated, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ 
الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُنُ الصَّلَاةِ That is prayer, establishing prayer. And وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ That is paying zakah. So, offering prayer and paying zakah, both have been mentioned in 32 times, 32 times in the Holy Quran together. And other than that, our fuqahi kiram and ulama kiram, they have mentioned that 700 times, 700 times, the uh, prayer has been mentioned in Quran. And many other times, paying zakah has been described in the Holy Quran. Then about observing fast in the month of Ramadan, Almighty Allah has said in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O believers, fasting has been, fasting has been prescribed over you as on or before you so that you can attain piety. There are many other ayat as well. Shahru Ramadan al-ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. And as far as uh, Hajj is concerned, so regarding Hajj, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا So this ayah is about Hajj. Performing Hajj of, the, of this house for the sake of Allah is an obligation upon the people who have the means to reach this house, the Holy Kaaba. So these are ayat of the Holy Quran which are about the obligation of these worships, fasting and uh, fasting, offering prayer, performing hajj, paying zakah. And so these are the basics and these are obligations. But as we know, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has described a build, has described these things as a building, as a building of Islam. So as we know, building is not only based on only these things. There are some other things as well in, build, in a building. As a building is beautified and adorned with many other things. Similarly, the building of Islam is adorned with many other things. And what are those? Those are mustahabbat and sunan. The sunan of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the other desirable actions which have been, which have been recommended in Quran and Hadith. So those, that is the beauty of Islam and that is the, that is the beauty of Islam and that is the decoration of Islam. So other things also, uh, the, uh, other things also in Islam. Now the second hadith, this hadith has been narrated by Hadrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anha. He has mentioned, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-Imanu bid'un wa sab'un wa shu'batan. فَأَفْضَلُهَا قَوْلُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَدْنَاهَا إِمَاطَةُ الْأَذَا عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ وَالْحَيَاءُ شُعْبَةٌ مِّنَ الْإِيمَانِ Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه has narrated the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has stated Iman Iman has over 70 branches the uppermost of which is the declaration, none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. And the least of which is the removal of harmful object from the road. And modesty is a branch of Iman. In this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has mentioned some beautiful things, the branches of Iman. Islam is like a tree. In previous hadith, Islam was described as a building. And a building is based on pillars. So in that hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned those pillars. Then some things we added uh, with those things. But in this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned Islam as a tree. Al-Imanu bid'un wa sabi'una shu'batan. It has branches. So Islam is like a tree whose root is kalima tayyibah whose root is Kalima Tayyibah and then the deeds of Islam, the actions of Islam which have been emphasized upon in Islam, those are the branches of Iman. What are those branches? Inshallah we will uh, mention now. But the same meaning, mean Islam is like a tree, Iman is like a tree, faith is like a tree, that parable has been mentioned in the Quran as well, in the Holy Quran as well. As Allah has Mentioned in the Holy Quran, Alam Tara Kaifa Dorabalahu Mathalan Karimatan Poichibadan. 
giving its fruit as all times by the command of its lord the good sentence the good kalima the goodly word is like a tree as tree has branches the tree of faith has branches as a tree gives fruits all the time all the time it gives fruit the tree of faith gives fruits as well so means you can see the same things which has which has been mentioned in hadith almighty allah has stated in quran as well now how many branches of islam and how many branches are of iman and faith in hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned bid'u wa sab'una shu'batan means more than 70 more than 70 now there is a difference of opinion among scholars whether the particularly number more than 70 is meant here or only the abundance of number is mentioned here is meant here so uh, some scholars have written particularly books regarding the branches of Islam as uh, the book by Alama Behki Rahmatullah uh, uh, with the name of Shu'abul Iman then the, the other books as well uh, with the same name and some uh, some have some different names with uh, with the name of Shu'abul Iman so they have described each and every branch of Iman and faith this is it is the branch of faith it that is the branch of Iman so what are those branches scholars have mentioned in detail and they have explained very beautifully some of them I'll mention here one of the branches of faith is love with Almighty Allah and love with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and love with everything which is beloved to Almighty Allah whether they are human beings as Awliya Kiram as Sahaba Kiram as Tabi'in as the pious people as the virtuous people, salihin, muttaqin, khashi'in, rahimi, are those are things at, as good deeds, offering prayer, establishing uh, offering prayer, performing hajj, and giving charity in the path of Allah, and then offering tahajjud prayer, and then being kind to other people. All the good deeds which are beloved to Allah, those should be beloved to a person as well. So, love, loving Allah Azza wa Jal, having love with Allah Azza wa Jal, and having love of everything which is beloved to Almighty Allah. Then a person should remain in love of Allah till the last moment of his life. And he should love every, and he, if he loves someone and something, he should love only for the sake of Allah and if he hates something or someone so he should hate that thing or that one only for the sake of Allah so that is one of the branches of Iman then loving the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam having perfect love of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also a branch of Iman and branch of faith then uh, giving respect and the proper respect to the friends of Allah and having respect in heart regarding the prophets of Allah, regarding the friends of Allah is also the branch of Iman. Then sincerity is also one branch of Iman. Sincerity means whatever we do, that should be only for getting the pleasure of Allah. Whether that action, that deed belongs to our body, or belongs to our tongue, or belongs to our heart, or belongs to our wealth whatever good deed we do that should be only for the sake of Allah there shouldn't be any other intention that shouldn't be for getting the name and fame that shouldn't be for any other purpose everything should be only for the sake of Allah giving 
uh, charity in the path of Allah, uh, offering prayer and performing Hajj and performing Umrah and the other worships and other good deeds, whatever we do, that should be only for Allah Azzawajal. So that sincerity is the branch of Iman. Then having a relation with Allah, having strong relation with Allah, in which meaning that our heart should be full of fear of Allah Azzawajal. Our heart should be full of fear of Allah Azzawajal. And in our heart should be fear of Allah and hope from Almighty Allah. Hope of the mercy of Allah. Hope of the kindness of Almighty Allah. And he, we should be, we should be, we should remain hopeful for the favors of Allah, for the blessings of Allah. And if we commit any sin, if we commit any evil deed, so immediately we should repent of it and we should turn to the court of Almighty Allah and we should apologize in the court of Allah and we should seek forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. That is one of the branches of Imam. Then paying gratitude, expressing our gratitude in the court of Allah because we, knows very, we know very well that whatever favor we have, whatever blessing we have, that is from Allah Azzawajal. Wa ma bikum min ni'matin fa min Allah. Whatever blessing and favor you have, that is from Allah Azzawajal. So every blessing, every favor is from Almighty Allah. So that's why we have to pay gratitude to Allah Azzawajal. So when we get any favor, although uh, we all, all the time and all ways we have blessing of Allah Azzawajal, but sometimes particularly we get some favors. As uh, when uh, we get a child, when we get married, and when we uh, learn some knowledge, or when we uh, achieve uh, some lawful wealth, so when we gain uh, some other things, so those are the part those are the particular times for paying gratitude to Allah Subhanahu So whenever we get any favor from Allah Subhanahu we should pay gratitude to. Almighty Allah. We should express gratitude to Allah Azzawajal. So that is one of the branches of faith. Then a recitation of the Holy Quran and a remembrance of Almighty Allah and recitation of the Naat of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are also branches of faith. So recitation of Quran, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, that is really the branch of faith because our, our faith demands and requires us to decide the kalam of Allah, the word of Allah. Then there is a beautiful summary of some of the branches of Iman. So I'll mention here. A person, a mu'min, a faithful person should be pleased with Allah's will and decree. If he faces any difficulty, if he faces any problem, so he should be, he should show patience and he should be satisfied and pleased with the will of Allah and with the decree of Allah. Then a faithful person should place his trust in Allah, which is called tawakkul. As Allah had mentioned in the Holy Quran, Wa Allahi fatawakkalu in kuntum mu'mineen. And only in Allah you should put your trust if you are believers. If you are believers, so then you should put your trust only in Allah Azzawajal. So that tawakkul is branch of Iman. Then respecting our elders and having compassion on the youngsters are also branches of faith. Respecting our elders and having compassion on youngsters, both are the branches of faith, both are the branches of Iman. It shouldn't mean that we, we, we do one of them and we leave the other one. No. Both should be done and both should be in our practice. We should respect our elders and we should show our affection on our youngsters, compassion our youngsters. Then a believers, a faithful person should refrain from arrogance and he should adopt humbleness. Then the beauty of Islam and perfection of faith calls upon him to continue to chant Kalima Tayyibah and Shahada, recite Quran, 
if he is unlearned, he should acquire knowledge from the scholars. And if he is learned, the first one is unlearned. If he is unlearned, he should acquire knowledge from the scholars. And if he is learned, then he should teach and he should convey that knowledge to unlearned, unlearned people. So that is the branch of Iman. Then uh, he must preserve in seeking Allah's help in achieving his objectives. So these are the branches of Iman. The branches of faith include offering first and optional salah, fasting, the prescribed and voluntary fastings, covering oneself, covering one body and giving charity, setting slave, uh, slaves free if that is possible, performing Hajj and Umrah, engaging in Nafal worships and emigrating from enemy's territory to the land of Islam, giving rights to others and being dutiful to parents. Both are very important. Giving rights to others. That is very important. We, we should not only demand just for our own rights. We have to give the rights of other as well. And that is more important. If someone is depriving us of our rights, so that is his fault. But if we are depriving others of their rights, so that is our fault. That would be our sin. So we should be careful in this regard and we should pay and we should give the rights of others. That is very important. Then being dutiful to parents. That is one of really the basic commandments of Islam, one of the basic rulings of Islam, being dutiful to parents, providing our services to our parents at uh, in, in all the aspects of life and in our whole life, we should be respectful to our parents, we should be dutiful to our parents. Then raising one's children in accordance with Sharia rulings. That is also very important because being dutiful to parent that is uh, obviously that is very important and that is a Sharia obligation but raising our children in accordance with the commands of Islam with the rulings of Islam is also very important and that would be the best gift and present from us to our children. We provide them food, we provide them their necessities, we fulfill their rights, we fulfill their needs but that is another very, very important thing to raise them in accordance with Sharia. Otherwise, they would be they would be brought up, they would be raised up, but their life would be totally away from the teaching of Islam, and that would be our fault, and that sin would be upon us as well, not only upon them, that would be upon us as well. So that's why raising children in accordance with the rulings of Sharia is very important. Then Reconciling to quarreling people, reconciling to quarreling people. As it happens many times, sometimes quarrel takes place among our brothers, among our friends, among our relatives, among other Muslims. So that time we should play our role. We should play our role. We should reconcile among them so that they should become again brothers of each other. They should become brothers. That is, that should be, that should be our role, that should be our practice, that should be our intention, that should be our action regarding them. And that is very important. Engaging in the services of Islam against enemies of Allah with pen or tongue or through other possible lawful ways to the best of one's ability. Whatever we can do for our beloved religion Islam we should do. <coughs> if we have capability, we have ability to use pen in the favor of Islam, we should use that. If we can use our tongue in the favor of Islam, we should use that. If we can do something, something else for Islam, we should do for Islam. And being silent, remain silent and not doing anything, whatever is being uh, is being done around us, so we are silent, we, we, are, we are closing our eyes, and we are looking nothing, we are focusing our, uh, our own life and our own luxuries and our own uh, 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 life necessities and needs and we are, not, we are not looking upon the needs of Islam. So if that is our character, so that is not the character of Muslim, that is not the role of Muslim. Muslim 
اللہ سوجل حیث ٹول اس کون تم خیرہ امت اخرجت لناسی تأمرون بالمعروفی و تنہونا عن المنکر و تؤمنون باللہ So that is our responsibility from Allah Azza wa Jal to provide our services to Islam if we can enjoin upon others to good deed and if we can forbid others from committing sins and evil things so that would be our responsibility to do that would be our Sharia duty to do so we should do that so that is an, and, and that is branch of Iman then being kind to neighbors being kind to neighbors is very important and that is really one of the basic teachings of Islam because when we live somewhere and in our surroundings we have our neighbors so because we have to live in that locality so without without creating a peaceful environment and society we can't survive we can't live properly and peacefully ourselves as well so create that environment so to create a peaceful environment to create a peaceful society it is our duty to pay the rights of our neighbors and wherever, wherever it is practice means uh, the rights of neighbors are, are are given so that society is a peaceful society and if everyone is away from each other everyone is away from others he is not paying the rights of others so then what happens so then all the time they are arguing with each other they are quarreling with each other and sometimes they are fighting with each other it happens but if in beginning and if in our life we pay the rights of our neighbors and we become kind to our neighbor so then the, the peaceful society would would come into existence then earning lawful wealth that is also very important and then spreading salam means uh, whenever we meet a Muslim we should say salam to him so uh, that is branch of Iman so these are the things which could be considered and which are the branches of faith and these are the things which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam had mentioned Al-Imanu bid'u wa sab'una shu'batan fa aftaruha qawlu la ilaha illallah la ilaha, la ilaha illallah is the best of them why? because that is the root that is the basic of Iman that is the basic of Islam believing in Allah, believing in the messengership of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that is base that is base then all the other things are after that then one special thing which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned here uh, two spe special things have been mentioned here one is imatatul adha anit tariq removal of a harmful thing from the road if we see any harmful thing on the road so we should remove that so that the other people shouldn't be hurt the other other people shouldn't be harmed with that 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 is branch of iman and that is the that is the lowest branch of iman whosoever is a muslim so that is his basic and first duty that is his basic duty to remove the harmful things from the road so tell me what about maadallah killing other people slandering other people abusing other people teasing other people, hurting other people. So what would be the intensity of these actions in, in Islam? Now the killing is being uh, committed in the name of Islam. Terror is being spread in the name of Islam. So how far are these things from Islam? Islam is mentioning and describing to remove a harmful thing from the road is branch of faith means that is the demand of your iman that is the demand of your faith whosoever is muslim he should be he should be useful and beneficial for others he should he should be useful for other people and if he finds and sees any harmful thing on the road he should remove that so now what about killing other people how can islam teach us like these things how can islam provoke us to kill other people no that is haram that is haram killing other people is haram almighty allah has mentioned in the holy quran not only in one places in many places in many places in many places the evil of killing other people as one place allah has mentioned min ajli dhalika katabna ala bani israel annahu man qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafsin aw fasadin fil ardi fa kaanma qatala an-nas jami'a وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Almighty Allah said because of that we ordained for the children of Israel that if anyone killed a person 
not in retaliation of murder, or to spread mischief in the land, it would be as if he killed all mankind, and if anyone saved a life, it would be as if he saved the life of all mankind. Look at the words, look at the meanings, look at the vastness of meaning, look at the beauty of the sentence, what is that, what are the teachings of Islam? Almighty Allah has mentioned, فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever, whoever kills only a person, only one life, who takes only one life, he is, he is like he has killed all the mankind and who saves only one life, who saves even one life, he is like that person who has saved all the mankind. That is the teaching of Islam. So is it possible that the Islam which is giving these kind of teachings, he can provoke people to kill other people? To kill other people? To take the lives of other people? No, it's not possible. Then, and that is a matter of life. The matter of respect and the matter of the status, the, the matter of the respect of other people, Islam emphasize, Islam emphasize us to pay respect to other people and slandering and back, backbiting and abusing, everything is haram in Islam. Look at accusing chaste women, how evil is this and how sinful act is this. Almighty Allah has stated, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْسَنَاتِ الْغَافِلَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ لُعِنُوا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Indeed, those who falsely accuse chaste, unaware and believing women are cursed in this world and the hereafter and they will have a great punishment. They will have a severe punishment. Curse and severe punishment is for those people who accuse falsely the chaste one, the chaste ones. So the person who is only accusing, he is not physically harming other people. He is only accusing but he is hurting them. He is hurting them. He is teasing them through this way, through ac accusation. And Almighty Allah is mentioning about that person, what is the recompense of that person Almighty illustrated, Lo inu fi dunya wal akhira. They are cursed in this world and in the hereafter. And walahum adabun awdeen, and there is fair punishment for them. So these are the teachings of Islam. So if someone, if someone is committing these evils in the name of Islam, so then that person is wrong. That person is evil. These are not the teachings of Iman. These are not the teachings of Islam. Now the next thing which have been mentioned in this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, وَالْحَيَاءُ شُعْبَةٌ مِّنَ الْإِيمَانِ And modesty is also a branch of faith. Modesty is also a branch of faith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has particularly mentioned about modesty. What is the reason? What is the reason? Our ulama uh, scholar, they have mentioned two reasons. Some of them said, might be there was a person who had a little lack in the matters of modesty. So addressing that person, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described about modesty, about haya. So according to the according to the situation, according to that condition, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned about modesty and haya. And some other scholar they 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 gave very beautiful reason, they mentioned. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had knowledge of unseen matters from Allah azza wa jal. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa knew very well that before the day of judgment, after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa before the day of judgment, the time will come when immodesty and indecency would be very, very common. Would be very, very common. Immodesty would be very, very common. So that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam particularly emphasized upon that so that the people should be aware of that. They should be very careful in that regard that the 
the modesty haya is a branch of faith so that's why they should adopt modesty and they should leave immodesty and they should remain away from immodesty and indecency that doesn't belong to islam and that is very far from islam islam put emphasis upon modesty and islam forbid from immodesty so because of the matter of modesty and immodesty decency and indecency rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned particularly this matter so now as we are observing nowadays what is the condition of modesty in our uh, in our society so we 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 observe and we know very well what is the condition how much immodesty is common among the people what kind of what kind of actions they commit sometimes not sometimes many times in public in front of other people some years ago means some years ago means you can say 100 years ago the condition was different the people were modest they used to take care of these things but now on the roads in the streets on the subway stations on means whatever place is they commit what they have to commit that is the condition now so that's why rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam put emphasis on the importance of modesty that that is a special branch that is a special branch of faith so you will have to be careful regarding that what is modesty what is haya haya is a quality and that is an attribute which forbids us which forbids a person from committing evil things from committing evil things when we have modesty we have in we have haya in our eyes in our hearts regarding our parents so that time we don't commit we don't commit any indecent thing in front of our parents because of that modesty because of that quality so that quality is demanded in islam that is emphasized upon in islam and when we have we when we have haya of our parents and of our elders so what about allah azza wa jalla almighty allah is most deserving is most deserving that we should we should be very very careful in the matter of modesty in the court of allah because almighty allah is seeing us all the time our our privacy and uh, our, our public life allah knows very well and he is seeing us everywhere so that's why we show and we practice modesty everywhere because almighty allah is seeing us wherever we are so that's why islam emphasizes upon modesty and particularly said about modesty al haya wa shu'batun min al iman modesty is a special branch of iman so these are the things which have been mentioned in this hadith in this hadith and some branches of faith have been mentioned in this hadith some of them uh, i have explained and many of them Uh, are remaining so inshallah uh, we will explain those uh, in detail may allah enable us to act upon the meanings and the commandments of this hadith amin bijahin nabiy alamin sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the light of hadith 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 in